Hi friends, Tracy here from The Sewing Channel. Welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome. I have an exciting tutorial for you today. Today's sewing tutorial is all about this tote bag right here. After you learn the magic tote bag technique, you will be able to make any size tote bag that you want. Now I ain't lying, this tote bag takes two seams and there's magic in it. Enough talking already, let the magic begin. For this particular bag right here, I am going to use a double-sided quilted cottony material with batting in the center. Now I bought this at Joanne Fabrics, they were having a sale and you can probably get it at a really good price if you just keep your eye out. But you absolutely do not have to use this double reversible type quilted material. It does look nice on these bags though. You can honestly use whatever cotton material you want just as so long as you have two separate pieces. What you need to keep in mind for the fabric positioning on the bottom of this bag is this right here. Now let me show you something. This right here is the salvage edge of a fabric. Now if I were to tug a little bit this way, you can see that there is give right there in this fabric. And this is on every fabric. So you see there I'm pulling and it's stretching. So if we were to have our tote bag, say this way, say this was our tote bag and the straps were right here, this would stretch and possibly warp our tote bag when we would put stuff into it. So let me show you this. Now remember, this is the salvage end right here of the fabric. Let's pull. I am pulling pretty tough on that. This right here is not wavering. It is much stronger going this way within the fabric. For the base of this bag, you will need one piece of fabric measuring 29 and a half inches this way by 12 and a half inches up and down. For the top of your tote bag, you will need 30 and a half inches lengthwise and seven inches up and down. You can make this bag any size you'd like it. But I caution you with this, with this method that I'm about to show you, you don't want to go much smaller than seven inches this way. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to turn it right side out. So just keep that in mind. And then you'll need a couple of thin nylon straps. Now you can make your own, but I wanted to make this as easy as possible for us today. These are nylon straps and you will need two of them at 27 inches in length. What I want you to do first is take this top piece right here and I want you to fold it in half just like that and then I want you to take it over to your ironing board and I want you to put a crease right along this edge right here. And what this essentially is doing is making a nice memory crease for us. And then I just want you to set that aside after you've put a crease in there. Now to help us out today, what I'm going to do is put a big W for wrong side. Well, that W isn't that great, is it? Okay. So that you know that if we're looking at that right there, that's our wrong side for the camera. So that way you can actually see what I'm doing here. And then I'll just go ahead and put right side here, an R for right side. And this is just some chalk that you can pick up at any craft store, Joanne Fabrics, and it's just got chalk in it and it just brushes right off after you're done. So I do like using that. The first thing we need to do is make some markings. So I'm just gonna go ahead here and fold that and put wrong sides together. This will be the top right here. Mark right there so you know that this is the top of the bag. Now in the end, we are going to be finishing this with a French seam. I'm gonna account for about a half an inch right along here. So I'm gonna actually put a line right here. We don't want to count this little bit right here because this is gonna be caught up in the seams and we want our straps to be even. So this is how we're gonna do that. What I want you to do is fold this then over here like this 
up to that chalk marking that you just made and then lift up this top area right here put your finger in there and fix that and if you just stick something down in there like that your chalk and you make a, a line like that then all of a sudden you have your middle it's your middle between these two points because remember this is going to be in the seam now what i need you to do is take your ruler so we got one two three and a half and then i want you to mark right there one, two, three, and a half, and mark it. Now this, right here, is where your straps are going to end up going. Now what we need to do is transfer that on the other side, and it's real easy. I mean, you can take a pin and just kind of poke it through like that, and you see how it pokes through, and then you know that, you know, that's right there. And then we do need to transfer those, so you, you have to do this step. Go ahead and put your pin through there. Make your line. And those match up if I were to look. Yep. See that right there? If you were to go like that, the line is right there. So that is where our straps are gonna go. That's important. Friends, this is the easiest bag you will ever make. So go ahead and open that up just like that. See that, we have that and that and there. Those are where our straps are gonna go. And I want you to open up this piece right here. Now we made it a little bit bigger in the beginning because there's going to be some squaring up right at that edge there and it just gives us some wiggle room but we are going to cut those flush so the next step is to take this and open it up with the right side facing up and then what i want you to do is lift this up and i want you to set it i want you to even that up so you have about you know an inch or so on the outsides there and then the next thing I want you to do, you see how this is? And the wrong side is over here and the right side is here. Here's a tip for you too. With these nylon, they shred terribly. What I did was take one of those fire starter lighters and I just singed the very edges just lightly and that was it and it took care of that. So the next step is to take these and set these like this right onto your edges right here. Make sure that these are not twisted. So make sure that you know they're all going in one direction and they're not all like that. And then what I want you to do is take your strap and find, you know, roughly the center of your strap, you're gonna be lining up that chalk mark that you made. And then you have that other piece underneath it. And what we're going to do is put a pin this way first and then you're going to grab an, another pin and take your other strap and make sure that it's lined up and you know what i lined it up just along the edge there it's not going to fray because i used the lighter on it so i line it up right along the edge and then i won't have to trim it later find the center and make sure you're getting all of those layers pinned together Okay, so you have that, that, and the strap. You have three things pinned together right now. So you see what I'm doing? I'm finding the center of my strap. I'm kind of eyeballing it, and then I'm just shoving it right up there. And then I'm pinning it. Another thing you want to keep in mind here is that these straps when you sew them are going straight that they're not like this they're not cockeyed this way or that way or slightly puckered that way so you just want to make sure that it just sits straight i'm going to turn it upside down to you right now to give you a better look at what's happening So the next thing is you're going to kind of just tuck 
this like this and what we're doing is just grabbing that quilted fabric and we're grabbing our strap and we're folding them in like this we're, we're essentially just rolling it up, but make sure when you do that you still keep these straps straight because that will matter here in a minute. And if you're using cotton, it won't be as hard to do this part because it won't be as bulky. So the first thing I do is don't unpin these just yet, but this is what you're gonna do. Find the middle, you're gonna lift this piece right here up to there. And then if you wanna keep sewing on your sewing machine, once you get over there and not have to take any pins out, you can back this pin up a little bit right there. So you see, I just essentially lifted that up and then I pinned all layers together. Now I'll get to these in a second, but right now I'm just anchoring these down because these will help us before we have to pin them all together with the strap. So I'm coming up this side. Tuck this in there good. Because if you don't roll it in there tight and tuck it in good, it, it becomes a problem later. <laughs> so you wanna make sure you do that. So right now I'm just pinning all the spots that didn't have a strap in it. I'm pinning all those together. So, and I can come down here and do the ends as well. So now from that center portion, you see that pin right there. Go ahead and hold this really good, that strap area with your thumb like that. Take the pin out, adjust if you have to, kind of sneak peek and see if that looks straight to you. And hopefully mine is because I'm looking at it upside down. <laughs> And then you wanna take that top piece and also you can shove, with this finger, you can shove that other back in there a little bit so it stays out of your way. And this one, I'm actually going to put straight in like that. Come over to this other strap. Take your thumb and hold those together and then you're gonna add that one in. Just like that. That one's good. This one. Hold that and then connect them all up in a little sandwich. And sometimes they call this the burrito roll-up method and you can see why they would call it that. The next thing we're going to do is go over to our sewing machine and we're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down, being sure to catch the strap and all the other layers together. But let's go ahead and take this over to the sewing machine and sew that right up. You might have to take this portion because it's so long and just drop it down there between your legs and have your foot on your pedal right there just so that it doesn't stick you. <laughs> also, I would try and have some coordinating thread to go with my fabric. Just makes things nicer. And we're gonna do about a quarter inch seam allowance 
We're also going to back stitch right here as well. We just want to make sure that all of the layers are gathered within. And once it gets to a certain point, you can pull out your pins. This little tool is handy right here. If something gets amiss, you can always pull with that. These are um, plastic medical forceps, if anybody's interested. So this is what you should have so far. It's one big long tube, just like a sausage, all sewn up with all those layers sewn within there. Now this right here was seam number one. This next step is the whole reason why you even clicked on my video today. So what I need you to do is take one end, it doesn't matter whichever end, and try to find like what would be the bottom of the bag, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. You just need to find something and tug. <laughs> and tug gently, you know, you don't want to be too overly rough with this. You can even kind of turn a little bit first just to get it started. It's a little hard at first to get it started, but once it gets going, you'll, you'll be fine. You'll see what I mean when you go to do it. Try not to pull on the straps when to pull it the rest of the way through because you don't want to loosen any of those seams that you just made. This is a really fun project. This is my fourth tote bag already. Oh, can you feel the magic? I can feel the magic about to happen. <laughs> There's the other strap. See, this is why we don't wanna make that top part too skinny because we wanna be able to pull it through easily. Look at all that magic, oh my word. That is so magical. <laughs> Now this may be a little wrinkled right there, but we're gonna iron that up. So this is what you should have so far. This was that W, I don't know if you can see it still, but I'll remark it for you. See how nice this goes away? That's why I like it. Sorry, that's a crazy looking W, but I'm trying to do it upside down. And this was the right side of the fabric. The next step is to, we're gonna just re-iron that crease. Remember we put a memory crease in there, but we're just going to make it look a little bit better. I mean, I'm really into anchors right now. As you can tell, these anchors are just so darling. I just love nautical, I really do. There's something fresh and clean about the nautical prints. So in here, it's all encased. You see, there's no seam showing. So now mind you, we've only done one seam so far. So we're doing really well. Now you don't wanna hit your iron on the nylon strap unless you put another fabric over it to iron it if there's, you know, cause these do look a little wrinkled, but. So here I'm just gonna go right up and make sure. First, why don't we do this? Let's go to the wrong side. Remember our W there? And I'm just gonna pull that up like that. Okay. 
Now be careful even here because you don't want the heat to go through to those nylons. So if you're going to go over it, go over it quick. Let's flip it. good oh my goodness it's so darling now these are tucked in there remember they're stuck down into the seam allowance but what I want you to do is just leave that right there and kind of fold it while holding that down because we don't want that to get all wonky in there just fold it up like that and straighten it up there just like so that it's straight And I want you to put a pin right there. I want you to do the same thing here. Lift up. Keep your finger there because we want that to fold back over on itself. Make sure it's straight. If by chance you did get a little crooked, this is where your saving grace is. This is how you're going to fix that. So you're finger is pressing there and you're just folding that right onto there. And if it's a little crooked, you can position it so that it's however way you want it because we're going to sew these down. Hold that down there so that we're folding it onto itself. Make sure it's got some resemblance of straightness there. and pin it. This is not necessary, but you can put a top stitch right along here, along this edge right here, just to tack everything down. I will be doing that with this particular tote bag, but you do not have to. But what you do have to do, here, we're going to take this over to the sewing machine, drop your needle here, reinforce there, come up here, Pivot your sewing machine needle, come across here and down. Now you can do the decorative box thing here if you want, you know, with the crosses in the middle, but I'm not going to do that just because I'm not going to. You want to make sure that that is all connected and you're going to do the same to all these. So you're essentially just making a big rectangle with your stitches. First thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to do a top stitch all across the top and then I'm going to go do the boxes. Now mind you, these are extra little stitches that we're doing, but it's still a two seam tote bag. So remember we've only done one seam so far, so we still have one seam left. So let's take this over to the sewing machine and we'll see how that looks. So first thing we're going to do is our top stitch. And you're going to go ahead and back stitch there. And essentially you're going to go right along here and you should be catching that initial nylon strap in there and the bulk of that fabric in there. The needle should be hitting all of that. You can go ahead and take your pins out at this point because now you've tacked that initial part down with your top stitch and it looks something just like that. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our big rectangle. Go ahead and lift it up and pivot and go over that same line that you initially went over with the top stitch. Lift up. And 
here I'm just going to back stitch the top. I used thread that matches so you can't even tell that that's connected. Now you can on that side, but not on that side. So go ahead and do all four of those just like that. So this is what you should have so far. These have been tacked down. You can see the stitching on the other side. Now this is the right side of the fabric. Remember you can lightly see that. This is the inside, the wrong side of the fabric. So our next step now is to take wrong sides and wrong sides and put them together so that your right side is facing outward. Now I know it seems counterintuitive, but that's essentially a French seam and it, it always feels weird to do a French seam. But I'm gonna turn it around this way so I can see it facing me and then I'm going to go ahead and square that up. So this is where you're going to cut off that excess right there. Just like that. Let's go ahead and pin so that they match up best you can here on the sides. So the next step is to go ahead and do a scant eighth inch seam allowance all the way around. Now make sure that you are catching everything in there. I'm gonna go ahead and take those pins out. Now my next step is I'm going to cut off as close as I can to the seam right there without clipping those threads. I think I'm gonna use my scissors instead. You just wanna be really careful to get close because this is bulk right here and we don't, with a French seam, you wanna to try to keep as much bulk out of your seam as possible. So I'm getting close, but I'm not clipping the actual seam threads. And when you get to that corner area, you might wanna just snip that end off right like that because those can get bulky. Now that was essentially seam number two. Remember this was seam number one, now this was seam number two. Now it's still the same seam, but it's just a French seam. That's why I didn't call it a three seam tote bag, because essentially it still is only two seams. So, But we are going to sew around it one more time. So what you're gonna do is poke those corners through and we're going to turn it inside out now. Now when you turn it inside out, you wanna use like a little pokey tool, but be sure you don't poke through the corners. And you just wanna ever so gently press those corners out. Because we wanna make sure we catch that in the next seam that we do. Now a little tip for you is here, we wanna make sure that this is all the way out this seam because it it tends to kind of want to suck back in there so what you're going to do is take your fingers and you're going to roll that so that the seam comes to the very edge now you can pin this once you get the seam to the edge but i don't find it necessary if i am really careful to do this part right here i don't find it necessary to pin you see how it wants to suck in there like that so you wanna pull it out and roll that seam to the very edge. Now the next thing we're gonna do is take this to the sewing machine and we are going to sew probably a little more than a quarter inch down and this way. We're going the same path initially that we did when we had it wrong sides together. Now it's right sides together. So go ahead and sew that down and over and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so you see that I sewed all the way around and go ahead and snip your threads there if you have any. So initially we put wrong sides together and sewed. It encases that seam so there's no 
fraying at all. Turn it right side out. <laughs> a lot of inside out, right side out with this tote bag, right? So the next thing we wanna do is get our iron and we're just going to press right along that area. Now, just like we did in the step prior, you're gonna roll that seam back out. <laughs> You should end up with this darling little tote bag that took you minutes to make and it only had two seams in it. You can make this any size that you would like it. Just remember, keep in mind that top portion. And there you have the two seam magic tote bag. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.